Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really good. Today I'm going to do another story time video. If you haven't seen my other one, then I did a story time on how I was 17 stone and begging for a gastric band. So if you haven't seen that, I will leave the video link at the end of this video. But today's video is going to be a slightly different one. It's going to be on how bullying basically, well it did, it left me left me bed bound, I'm going to go into detail and just like explain it and just talk about my whole experience with with bullying because it ruins your life, it literally does, it's just it's the most awful thing and people don't understand how much it can affect someone. This happened when I was at high school, now everyone's high school experience is obviously completely different, it depends, it depends on everything doesn't it, it depends if you're like one of the popular people or like what what group you're in, depends on so many things, but I can tell you this, my high school experience, it weren't a pleasant one. But before I get into it, make sure you get yourself all comfy, get yourself a tea, a coffee, whatever, grab yourself a drink, get comfy, and let's have a little chat. So I am, and I always have been, probably always will be, I'm a very shy person. I take a very long time to open up to people. I find it really hard to talk to people, especially if if I don't know them or I haven't known them for very long. Like I'm not I'm not a confident person. I'm not someone that can just go up to someone and start chatting and be confident and I'm just that's, that's just not me. I'm very shy. I I tend to sort of sit back and I like to listen rather than be I hate to be the centre of attention. I like to listen rather than be the one talking. I, I don't mind like taking a step back and just, you know, being in the background. I just I don't like the attention. But once I am comfy around someone, I do get to know you. Once I do open up, I'll be my proper my proper true self. Like James always laughs and says like when we first met you're not you you <laughs> he's like he says to me you're like you are on your best behavior and then when i got to know you like the real me came out and then he was stuck with me then because you know he'd fallen in love with me and he was he was stuck with me then but yeah like it takes me a a long time to feel comfortable around someone like comfortable enough for me to be my true 100 percent self like with me and james i reckon james is one of the the people well, obviously he's one of the people that I'm most comfortable around because he's my partner but I I literally don't care what I do in front of him like if I burp if I fart like I don't have to try and eat like ladylike like you know I scoff my food like I don't I don't have to try and be polite and like I'm just a hundred percent me a hundred percent I don't know psycho like I'm not I don't act like, I'm not like a proper like girly lady, like, I don't know how to explain it, like I'll burp, I'll fart, like, you know, I'll be on my comfies, I'll be just like slouching about, my legs, you know, not sitting lady like, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. I can tell him everything, like literally, I swear, he has to listen to so much drama, like I tell him all my problems, I speak to him like he's one of the girls, like I speak to him about all my problems, all the gossip, like I literally, he just bless him, he just has to sit and listen to me just ramble because I tell him everything. Like I swear there's probably nothing, there's nothing that he doesn't know. But anyways, my point is if if I don't know you, if we don't know each other and I haven't opened up to you, then I will be the quietest, shyest person there ever was. And I probably, to be fair, I probably won't even talk to you unless you talk to me. Like I I don't have it in me to be the to go up to someone and have like to strike up a conversation. So I was the girl at school who didn't really talk. I had friends, not a lot of friends. I had like a small a small circle of friends. I didn't have like a whole group of friends, but the friends I did have, you know, they were good friends, but I just didn't have didn't have many friends. And I was the girl at school who people thought oh she don't talk, she don't say nothing and when you're at school you people just they put you down for everything don't they? They'll bully you for absolutely any little thing. One of the things that I was mostly bullied for is I've always struggled with hair on my upper lip now always have done. People were so mean to me about it to, even to the extent where I would literally if I was in class I would sit like this like that is how I'd sit the whole time. If I was sat down anywhere, I'd be like trying to cover it just like constantly. 
because people were just so mean about it. I mean, there must have been other other girls who have the same problem because so many people, now I'm out of school, people, now you're grown up and you're like, you're adults and people tend to talk about things more. Like, there must have been so many people at school with the same problems, but I don't know. I don't know. I felt like I was literally the only person. And it makes you feel like, I don't know, like you're some sort of alien, like you're not, you're not normal. And then the fact that I was sitting with my hand in front of my mouth, I got the mickey taken out of me because of that. So you can't win, like, they take the mickey out of my facial hair and then I try and hide it and then they, they take the mickey out of me. It's like, what do you want me to do? And I remember the day that I went home and, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't horrendous. Like, it was a little bit dark in places, but it wasn't like a full on tash, you know what I mean? So, but anyway, I, I remember the day when I, I went home and I got the shaver and I just shaved the little bits of hair and when mum got home, I was, I was in tears, I was... I was so upset, so she she paid, bless her, she paid for me to have laser hair removal, but that's that's really expensive, and it's really expensive to try and keep up. I mean, the, the more laser treatments you have, the hair is, it's meant to not grow back, but it's expensive, so we tried that. I remember using this, I don't know what it was, it's like this bleach stuff, it's like it, it dyes it, it makes it lighter, it makes the hair lighter, so it's not so visible, that stunk. I remember that absolutely reeked, this stuff. We used that. I still have the same problem now. I still have the hair, obviously. I just, I either pluck it or I use hair removal cream now. Oh, I did used to have a no-no, a no-no hair removal device thing, and that worked really well, actually. I had that for years, and it broke. I've, I've been looking into getting a new one, but they're like 200 quid. They're not cheap. I mean, my mum bought it for me back then, so I didn't realise how much they cost, but it's like 200 pound. That is a lot of money, but it was really good. So I am debating getting another one because it's just really quick, really quick, really easy. And that was like my saviour. When I, when I found that machine, I used it all the time. Like as soon as I saw a little bit of hair grow back, I was getting, I was getting it out and I was using using the no-nos, I really do think I should get another one. But yeah, if it wasn't people bullying me about my, my lip hair, it was, it was my hair, my actual hair, like on my head. I mean, it doesn't look too bad now, but my hair can be very thick and curly and just like a cave girl. I mean, can you see this ringlet going on? Where is it? Can you see that ringlet? I mean, I love my hair now. Like back then it was the thing to have straight hair, but I love, I do love my curls now. And it's always the way, isn't it? If you've got straight hair, you want curly hair. If you've got curly hair, you want straight hair. But when I was at school, everybody was straightening their hair. Everyone had really thin, straight, shiny, sleek hair. And I was the girl that had big, like, Hagrid type hair and didn't, I was still trying to learn what, how to, how to manage it, how, what to do with my hair. I remember straightening it and straightening it. And my mum will tell you, I straightened it until I fried my hair, especially there was a bit of bit up here and it, I completely fried it because I was so obsessed with it being straight like other people's and I had to have it looking like all the other girls had their hair. So I was just obsessed with straightening it and I ruined my hair. It completely ruined my hair. I remember the day I'd been to the hairdressers. I don't know if I'd had my hair dyed, but I definitely had like had it cut and washed and dried and straightened and they straightened it and my hair was really thin like it was I think it must have been the first time that I'd seen my hair thin and straight and I looked like the other girls so I was really excited to go to school the next day and have this like new hair and I thought people would then treat me different because I'd look the same as them so I I was really excited to go to school this day and blend in with the other girls and it made no difference and people said to me oh your hair looks nice but it made no difference like I I don't know what I thought like I don't know why I thought having straight thin hair I'd automatically then go to school the next day and I'd, I'd get lots of friends and like people would want to talk to me it didn't work like that and if it wasn't my hair then it was my shoes I've not got small feet I'm a size 8 and back then I think there's more variety in bigger shoe sizes now but back then to try and find a nice pair of shoes in my size was impossible like all the trendy nice cute school shoes that everyone else had 
So they probably stopped at like a size six or a size five and I was a size eight. It was impossible. You no, know, me and mum spent hours and hours. I remember it like it was yesterday in, in shoe shops and I hate, I, this is probably why I hate shoe shopping because of the amount of time me and mum spent trying to find me a nice pair of shoes. I hate shoe shopping, it is like literally my, my nightmare, I hate it, it's my worst nightmare. We would spend so long trying to find me a nice pair of shoes and we just couldn't do it and my feet are quite awkward anyway so I've got to have comfy shoes. So I was the girl who didn't have the nice shoes, I had the, you know, the sensible shoes, the not so great looking but really comfortable school shoes. So if it weren't my hair, like my hair or my hair here, it was my shoes or the fact that I've never been a small girl, I've always been on the bigger side. So if it wasn't any of that, then it was my weight, like literally anything and everything I got I got bullied about. And then I remember the time when I got my first boyfriend, like everyone had already like had their first kiss and had their boyfriends and I got my first boyfriend. He was a little bit older than me and I remember thinking, right, I've got my I've got a boyfriend and you know, he's he had a car and I just thought that people again, people would I I'd fit in I suppose and people would want to talk to me and I'd fit in and it didn't work like that. It, it was actually the complete opposite. Ellie's come to say, hello, are you jealous? Am I not paying you attention? So yeah, I thought that I would fit in and actually it was the complete opposite because he was older. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't by much. It wasn't like anything dodgy or anything like that. But because he was older, I got, I got hate about that because he was older than me and it was just impossible like I was so excited and it was my first boyfriend and I was like you know in that bubble and I just yeah I thought like I said I thought I'd fit in because I've got a boyfriend like everyone else and no and even my friends people that were meant to be people that were meant to be my friends who I thought were my friends they bullied me they they gave me so much hate. I remember it like yesterday and it it hurt, it hurt a lot, especially considering they were meant to be my friends and they turned their back on me and join in with everyone else. So no matter what I did, I I couldn't win. And I remember I remember the classes, like there were some classes where I would be sitting next to or very close to, if not sitting next to, like they would be in the desk in front of me. The people that would be doing the bullying, the people that were really mean to me and I used to dread them classes so much and then there would be the classes where I'd be sitting next to people like I'm not going to name names but I remember their names like I remember all their names but I really remember the people that were actually nice to me the people that actually took the time to have a conversation with me and treated me like you know a normal actual human being because we are all human we've all got feelings and I remember thinking oh it's okay like I've got I don't know maths class or something and I'm sitting next to whoever and he's actually nice to me but then when the people that weren't nice to me actually saw me talking they would be really horrible and they'd be like oh so she does talk oh she talks like oh she actually speaks but not not in a funny way in a nasty way and then that makes you feel like absolute rubbish and then you sort of hide away again like I'd... high school if you are one of the people that, if you're one of the popular people or you're like up there somewhere, then you're really lucky. Well, I say that, but watching other people's YouTube videos of people that have been in the popular group, they've spoke about how actually it's not all that great. Like, I'm not gonna go into it all now. This is, this is my story time, not theirs, but you know. You never know what is going on in someone else's life and how something, how something really affects someone. Anyways, you get the gist. Like, my, my experience at school every single day was, it was a nightmare. I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. It was, it was so stressful. Now, I've struggled with migraines since I was, probably around 12, 13, that sort of age, and stress is a major cause for my migraines, for my headaches. So being bullied, obviously, it causes you a lot of stress, a lot of like anxiety, like you're constantly worried about going to school the next day. Like when you get home, it's such a relief. When you walk out of them, them school gates, and you're walking home, the second, like, the second I would walk around that bend, and our house was like over here, 
the sense of relief, it's like, oh, I've survived another day. But then when you go to bed that night, you're just worrying about the next day and about, I don't know, you've got like, you've got English or maths class and you're going to be sitting next to this person and it's just, it's it's a constant constant worry and constant stress and it's absolutely horrible and I wouldn't wish it upon anyone so the fact that you're just stressed and anx anxious all the time was causing my migraines now if if you have migraines or you know about migraines then you'll know about cluster migraines which is basically when you get a migraine and it doesn't go for months now I I couldn't tell you how long this migraine lasted for but it was a long time, it was months and months and months and literally I couldn't do anything but lay in bed. I I had to see a specialist, I had so many doctor's appointments. My mum, or maybe it was my nan and granddad, I can't remember, but someone paid for me to go see a specialist because nothing was working. The doctors were giving me all sorts of different medication and trying everything and nothing, nothing was working. This migraine was just so severe. I remember we tried everything, I had cool packs on my head, I had these like rub on essential oil things, all the tablets and literally I remember the doctor prescribed me a tablet which would help me sleep and I would just be living off that basically and just trying to sleep because when you have a migraine generally the only way to get rid of a migraine for me is to sleep it off so I was literally going to bed at night, sleeping during the night and then mum would go to work my nan and granddad lived next door so I was really lucky that they were there to look after me and I would just sleep. I used to wake up about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, like literally I remember it. I remember it like it was yesterday and my granddad would always pop across to check on me when I was sleeping to see if I was awake, like if I was okay and I, I used to always wake up about 1-ish, 2-ish and then my nan would have made me a little like picnic, a little lunch and granddad would bring it across. And I would sit in bed and I would have, they'd bring me a cup of tea. Oh. Try not to get emotional because they're not here anymore. But but yeah, my nan used to make me a little, like, a tea and a little lunch. And granddad would bring it across, so I'd eat it in bed. And I'd get up, I'd literally, I'd move from the bed to the sofa. Because that's, that's what I could manage. And then my nan would come across and she'd keep me company, have a little chat, we'd have like place in the sun on in the background, like I would try and watch it when you got when you got such a bad headache, you, you can't really focus on much, but that would be on in the background, either be ready, steady, cook, or place in the sun, and my nan would just keep me company, and I'm pretty sure I then would go back to bed again because I just felt so awful, but that was my life for absolute months, like I was never at school because this migraine, this cluster migraine, it just went on forever. My highest attendance at school was 50%. Like, I just couldn't manage it. I remember when I went back to school and my migraine, it wasn't gone. It was e it eased a little bit, but I needed to go back to school because I'd had so much time off. I, ne I, couldn't, I couldn't have any more time off. And I went back to school and I'm... I remember I went back to school with one of these them forehead strips on because my head was still such agony. I didn't know what to do and I went back to school with a strip on my head and then I got bullied because I come back to school and I had this weird thing on my head and I remember just throwing it in the bin. I just took it off, threw it in the bin and then I spent most of my days in isolation. Not because I was in trouble, but because I just felt so poorly. But I had to be at school to do the work. I couldn't, I couldn't cope with being around people, and I couldn't cope with being bullied. And I was basically doing my work in isolation on my own because I couldn't, I couldn't manage it. And I know Mum had to pay for private tutors because I missed so much time off school because all I could do was lay about in bed. Mum had to pay for private tutors just so I could pass my exams. It was maths and science that I struggled with and mum had to pay so I could pass the exam so I could, you know, get good results and hopefully have a good future. I really wish I could go back and just tell myself, look, doesn't matter what people think. What people think is irrelevant and, you know, stick up for yourself. Do not try and change. Do not try and fit in. Do not 
you know, just, just be you. But when people tell you that, when people say, oh, you know, they're just jealous or they're trying to make themselves feel better, they've got nothing better to do, people can say whatever they want to you yeah, and it won't make the slightest difference in that when you're, or for me anyway, for me personally, when you're in that situation, no matter what anyone says, nothing, nothing makes you feel better and you don't know what to do and the days just drag on and on. And people don't realise how much, by saying something horrible and negative, how much that can affect someone. Like, you don't know what's going on in their life anyway. You don't know what goes on in someone's life. And you don't know the impact of saying something so nasty. And to do that every single day, to make someone's life literally, like, a living hell. And, you know, high school, it lasts a long time, doesn't it? It's not, it's not like, over and done with, just like that. It's it's a very long time and time drags and when you're unhappy and you're miserable and you're just you're that upset and stressed it seems like it's absolutely never ending i wish that i could go back and just tell myself like in years to come you're not even going to see these people the people that you're at school with i mean some people stay friends with their school friends don't they but realistically majority of the time you don't even stay friends or stay in contact with people that you went to school with. You're gonna grow up, you're gonna move on, you're gonna meet new people, you'll go out to work, to college, whatever. And then people that used to control your life and used to think it was so important, their opinion of you and what they thought of you. I don't even know what they're doing with their life anymore. Like I, don't know, I know nothing about them, they know nothing about me. They, they're in the past and they're irrelevant. Sometimes I wish that I could go back and I don't know, like I don't want to relive high school, but at the same time I wish I could go back and redo it and like now I feel like I've grown up and I don't take so much, you know, so much rubbish, like I'll stick up for myself, but I'm more, I'm better at like, you think in your head what you'd say in situations when it comes to it. I'm still that shy girl, I still struggle, I've, I've not got confidence, but I'm a lot further along than what I was years ago in high school, so if I was to be in high school right now, I don't think I'd be that girl who would just sit back like this, not say a word and be too scared to stick up for herself. Like I would stick up for myself now. Not to the extent that, you know, I probably wish that I would, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't take as much rubbish and squit that I did back then, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I've rambled on for a long time already. I've been recording for half an hour already, so I need to I need to wrap this up, but basically I just thought I'd do the story time just to, you know, let you get to know me a bit better and also if anyone's watching this that is getting bullied, it really is better if you talk to someone about it. Like I hardly told anyone that I was being bullied. Like my mum knew that people weren't nice to me and I'm pretty sure she spoke to the the principal at one point, but I don't think she knew the extent and how extreme the bullying was. I mean, even to this day, I don't think she knows. She'll know now when she sees this video. It would be a lot easier if you speak to someone, but at the same time, I know and understand, I've been there, that speaking to someone you don't feel like is an option because you're scared if they find out, if the bullies find out, then it will make the situation worse. But even if you just want to speak to someone about it who's like, not in that situation. Sometimes I find it easier to speak to speak to strangers about something like rather than speak to your parents, although you should speak to your parents, like I'm not saying don't, but sometimes it's easier to speak to someone who doesn't really know you and the situation. Like what I'm saying is my inbox is always open. I'll leave my Instagram name down below. So if you do feel like you need to talk to someone you don't know me, I don't know you. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that means you can feel like you can open up to me and you can send me a message and I'm here to listen. You can have a run and I've been there, done that. I know what it's like. Bullying can literally ruin your life and like I said, people don't realise how much by doing something or saying something to someone how much that affects someone. And it's not on, it's not okay. They need schools and even workplaces, even adults get bullied, like it's not just at school, it can be at workplaces, anywhere, boy, girl, whatever, everybody gets bullied and some people will talk about it, some people won't, but it's not okay and it needs to be stopped. But 
Anyway, I've been rambling for way too long. I don't really know what point I wanted to get across on this story time, but I just thought people seem to like how personal my last story time was on my weight loss. So I thought I would share another experience with you. It's a really personal one and not one that I've really spoke about to many people, but yeah, now you all know. But in a way, I'm glad it did happen to me because I don't know, I feel like everything happens for a reason and Maybe it's made me who I am today. And I'm completely different. Like I am not that girl that would take all that all that squit at high school. Like I've I've completely changed. Like I like I said, I'm not I'm not confident in any way, shape, or form. I'm not like an outgoing person. But I've grown up. I've changed. I've got some lovely friends. I've got James. I've got my family. I've got my little girl. My little boy. I've got. I've got everything like anyone could ever dream of. Back then when I was at high school, I didn't think I would be capable of having any of that. Like people make you feel like you're worthless and like they just make you feel so down. So the fact I've got some really close, lovely friends, like I still haven't got many friends, but the friends I do have, they are genuine, 100% like genuine friends. And like I said, I've got my partner, I've got James, I've got a little girl, I've got a little boy, I've got my family, I've got a beautiful home, like I've got everything, everything I've always wanted so and I am like generally a hundred percent happy and I often think well the bullies, bullies can't be happy in themselves, I don't understand how anyone can want to hurt someone's feeling. If anyone ever felt intimidated by me or anything like that like I would feel awful so I don't understand how anyone can go out of their way and purposely want to upset someone like to me that just it doesn't make sense so to be someone like that there has to be something going on like they there has to be something going on in their life that like they're not happy like they, they bully to make themselves feel bigger and to make themselves feel better about themselves bigger like I don't know that they want to be feared. They want people to be scared. I don't. I don't understand it. But but they can't be happy with their lives. So even now, like they're probably still unhappy now, aren't they? Like I don't know. I don't know. And like I said, I'm always here. If anyone does feel they need to speak to someone, then you can speak to me, and I'll be here to listen and hopefully, I don't know, help give you some advice, make you feel better. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Well enjoyed this video how can you really enjoy a video on someone saying someone talking about how they've been bullied but i hope you found this helpful in some way i'm really sorry if you are getting bullied just know that although it feels like it's going to last forever it doesn't and like i said before in years to come or months to come they won't even be in your life anymore and don't try and change yourself don't try to be someone you're not just be yourself don't ever feel like you need to change. Be yourself and people will love you for who you are and if they don't, then they can bugger off basically because they're not your true friends and it's not important to have a big group of friends. Even if you can count your friends on one hand, it's better to have friends who are genuine close friends than a big group of fake friends. But anyways, Hannah, stop rambling. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.